very well be that capitalism is what it's talking about. We're also talking about the red horse and communism, the spirit of communism is alive and well uh, in the world. It's always been a powerful force in, 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 hist in historical uh, events. And here are some of the uh, it's, uh, spirit of communism is known as the red power. Uh, and that's just a description based on uh, the color of communism, which is red. That's something that, you know, I'm not making up. We all know. Uh, what, do they, what do they call China? Red China. <laughs> you know, so this is not a new thing. And so red is this color, if it's, if it's connecting, of communism. And we have Vietnam, the Congo, Korea, China, so the Soviet Union. And a revolution always takes place in communist parties, in communist countries. You have revolution, okay? You also have communists kill their enemies and kill each other. There's a lot of killing going on. Uh, what was the last leader of, of China and the genocide and the millions of people that were being killed uh, having to do with all that conflict in that communist area? And the military might could be the sword. Let's look at, let's see if communism meet, matches the idea of the scripture in Zechariah. It says, and there went another horse that was red, and power was given to that, uh, given him that th thereon, to take peace from the earth. Does communism take peace away from wherever it's evolved in? It sure does. It soaks the peace. It sucks peace directly from, just like stealing life from a person. Uh, and that they should kill one another. Does that sound like something that's going on? In communism, they would kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And so instead of the, the red horse having to be what is technically known as war or just war as a whole, we're looking at this as possibly the description of a communist country or communism as a whole to know that it is a part of these horses that says this is going to be around during the time of the end. Do we have any communist countries right now? We certainly do. As a matter of fact, right now, Soviet Union, Russia is getting in, come on now, I mean, I hope you're watching your news. Soviet Union right now is getting involved with a deal with Syria to sell them advanced uh, missile, uh, missile protection or missile defense systems. Now they've already been involved in supporting Syria, but now they're getting a little, they're, they're up in the ante and Israel is like, um, <laughs> excuse me, you had better not be selling those to them. I don't know, I'm sure they have protested Russia supporting Syria uh, anyway, but when it comes to these advanced defense systems, it, it takes out the balance in these areas of conflict. And so, I hope I'm not boring you, but this is, this is today's life. This is true. This is not Bible. This is what's going on right now in your world, in your country, right now. Russia met with uh, Israel because Israel and Syria are in conflict. And so uh, Israel goes to Russia, hey, <laughs> bro, you're messing us up here. We're at war with these people and you're helping them out. We don't, we don't think that's pretty cool. We got a problem with that. Now Russia is a pretty big, you know, it's a superpower. Israel is also a power, but you know what really gives them most of their power is their they're backers. Who backs Israel? So, here we go. You, you hear what I'm saying? So, now, Israel's got a problem with Russia. If Israel's not big enough to take on... Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is world conflict, people. So now, that was the old news. Now the new news is that that deal has gone through. Somebody, just watch Yahoo News. Come on. Before you go in there and check your email, just click through and look for look on the news. Now the deal is, is that Russia's saying, no, we're selling them. See, I, I got some, when I heard that Syria and Russia were meeting, I'm like, well, you know, and it sounded like Russia was listening to Israel, so it might be okay. We might be all, because I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching for covenants. I'm watching for peace in, in the Middle East. I'm watching for things that are going to determine where I'm at in this process. So, here I'm thinking, you know, maybe Russia's not going to do it. The next thing I see, Russia is saying, no, we are going to sell to Syria whether you like it or not. 
It's a done deal. We don't agree with you. It's such a big deal. Yeah, because you're making the money. And you're a communist country. You don't care about the conflict you're causing because you're about war. You're about conflict. You're about destroying the peace. Right? So, now, I hope you're hearing me because this is the world you live in. Now, Israel, and they say, I got some people's attention. I had some people dozing off. Now they're like, what? Uh -huh. Excuse me? Is it what? Now I got your attention. Now Israel has said, now that Russia is going through with the deal and saying they're not going to back down. Now Israel is saying, we will not allow that shipment to take place and we will destroy it before it gets to Syria. We, 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 we find that a threat. Can you say act of war? We see that as a threat. If you do that, we are going to stop the shipment, which means that Israel is going to attack something that belongs until it gets to Syria. It belongs to Russia. So I'm going to walk up to Russia and slap that Russian bear and step back and think the bear is not going to... So I'm going to slap the bear. And think the bear is just going to look at me and say, oh, that was nice. And now Israel... Let's say they go and slap the bear, and the bear comes after Israel. Now the eagle's going to have to come and go. On. Now the eagle's going to have to step in. Now what do we have? That could be World War Three. And World War Three is not going to be no little thing. If we're talking about war against Russia, that means that there may be some nukes that are hit on our home country. Russia got stuff, missiles, ICBMs to go anywhere. They're, they're already targeted. They've already got, you think, come on, somebody hear me. You think that they haven't played war games to see how this works out? You think they haven't, they don't know strategic sites where they're going to hit first? Uh, when that happens, I want to live on a military base. Vaporize me first. Let me go home. So that's what we're talking about, church. Communism is alive and well right now, right here. Red China. China is a communist country. Guess who is in debt to China? Look, look, look at your shirt and see what it's made in. Made in. Uh, made in. Made in. We got ourselves so backwards. Can I just, can I just talk? We're going to talk. We're, gonna, we're gonna just going to talk some politics. We're, gonna, we're just going to talk about, uh, and I'm not telling you who to vote for or what to do. I'm just telling you how, to, how the world is right now. Listen, we've got a system right now. You know why we're dependent on foreign oil? I'm going to tell you, this is John Michael version of what's going on because I, I, I'm on a biblical sense, not based on all this political stuff. But you know what? We have, we have the ability to run cars on granola oil. We're almost back to the future where you can take a bunch of trash and throw it in your trunk and shoot off of your car. We got solar. We got electric. We got these different oils that you can use. And I'm not talking about you know, crude oil. I'm talking about like corn oil. We have the ability to be free of foreign oil. You know why we're not? In my opinion, I'm just telling you what I know. Based on what we were talking about, this capitalism and the stuff that's going on. This is a capitalist society. These people who have, <clears throat> and this is, this is our country. I'm not, and I love our country, don't get me wrong. But this is where we're at. We have politicians in office who have the ability to be the ones that are supposed to be speaking for you and I. <laughs> yeah, right. But see, when that politician gets a check for $1.2 billion from an Arab and says, listen, I'll make you very rich. Just don't push legislation that's going to get us so you can be independent. And see, that person, it doesn't affect him because he's independently wealthy now. Whoever, these, these politicians are getting kickbacks. They're getting big fat money to make sure that this country stays dependent on foreign oil because it doesn't affect them. They can buy all the oil they want because they're being paid off by people who have more money than dirt. These people have so much money. And the politicians who are making, you know, $300,000 a year in, in Congress... Here's two million dollars. Why don't you just not vote on that? So now we're stuck because they've got the money we, as, a, as a society. We would be completely changed to have the ability not to be dependent on foreign oil. But because of the situation in politics, it's not going to change. 
You know why? Because of greed. Because the rich want to stay richer and they don't care that the poor stay poorer. Which is exactly what we're talking about right here. The different division. Come on, somebody hear me. The, the, the Bible is telling us that there's going to be divisions of classes as a result of this kind of greed. A capitalistic society that's more worried about making and breaking so you can buy more than making it right so that we can make it last. We have, we have the productivity and the technology to feed everybody. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a bunch of stuff, store it, and say you can't have it unless you buy it. But if we had everybody with the technology of making what we needed and just give it to everybody freely. But of course that's, you know, and uh-oh, come on, I feel like the Lord just spoke to me. In the thousand year reign of Christ. Oh, somebody, somebody hear me. I love preaching the word of God. In the thousand year reign of Christ, is there going to be a capitalistic society? I don't think so. I don't think that it's going to be based on greed when, when the Lord God is in office. Somebody hear me. Just get a vision of what it's going to be like. What kind of government are we going to have where it's actually fair. It's actually for the people. Concerned about the people. Concerned about really helping people. I'll tell you what. And, and I'm just, I don't, I'm just going to have fun today. I, just, well, I told you I wasn't going to preach long. But you know how I guess I'm just a big old liar. I don't know. <laughs> I got to take it down this road. You know, uh, here we've got Democrats and Republicans. This is just something that the Lord showed me. I got to share it with you. You know, the Republicans tend to be very conservative. And you've got Democrats that tend to be a bunch of bunny huggers. And they're, and they're worried about every little thing. They're worried about the people more often. See, when it comes, I'm just, you can disagree with me all you want to. But people who are conservative and they tend to be, you know, uh, in a position of, of worried about money and, and hoarding money and taking care of themselves, they're not really worried about other people. But here, remember I preached in this church the other day, we were talking about homosexuals now. But they're so death on homosexuals. Well, I just, I think the Bible teaches that homosexuality is incorrect. But I don't think that you need to treat a homosexual any different than any other sinner. You should love that person. And say, I love you. I don't love what you're doing and i like to help you. And, and, and even have empathy. You know, I'm sorry that you're going, I'm sorry that's your plight. If, that's, if you feel like you were born that way, I'm sorry. But I'm telling you something, if you live for God. Your life will change. But here, the, the, but the liberals, oh, they just, they want to embrace everything. They, they love everybody and they, they want to let people do whatever they want. And, and they care about every little thing. They're worried about little ants up in, in Africa. You can't walk in that park because it's got to be a sanctuary for the ants. You can't go to this park. You know, they're, they're just worried, they're worried about every little life. Because they're liberal. Because you know what, I've been raised in a liberal family. But I b grew up in a, in a conservative church. So, so I'm understanding these things. This is, I think that we need to get a little bit more balanced here. We need to love people. Because I'm going to tell you something. Those the Republicans and these, and these rich fat cats don't love nothing but money. They call themselves Christians. They say, oh, we want to get rid of abortion. Guess what? Even when Republicans are off and there still is abortion. Even if there's a Republican president. There's still abortions. So, oh, I'm voting Republican because I don't like abortions and gay rights and all that. Well, people are still getting married. Who are gay when there's a Republican president. Those things aren't necessarily changed. We need to stop worrying about all this junk. And we need to worry about the vision of God. Amen. The vision of God is to love people. And to love souls. And to be concerned about what happens to people. And what concerns what we're going to do according to the word of God. You know, I love it when a Republican and a Democrat are fighting. Because I'm not either. I'm, I'm an independent. I'm independent of those things. And I'm, I'm dependent on Jesus Christ. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, it doesn't matter who's in office. They're both liars. I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot get into the office without getting fat cat money. And once you got fat cat money, you owe the fat cats your vote. You owe the things that you got to do. You got to pay back your loans for that fat cat money. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not so radical. I love this country. I'm just willing to tell you the truth about what's really going on. 
Republican, Democrat, it don't matter. It takes, you know how much, it made me sick when I, I really started following politics a little bit more as an older person when Obama started running, you know, might be the first black president. So I started paying attention. You know how much, it took, much money it took for us to nominate a, dem a Democratic person between Obama and Hillary? It took $500 million. $500 million for all the ads and all the campaigning. To, man, why don't you just give me uh, uh, $499 million and, and we'll just get, a, get together and we'll just pick somebody. I mean, really? It don't take that kind of money. It's all about the scam. It's all about who puts in all this money. Now you need all the money to get it off. I told my wife, I should just vote for president. Yeah. And she said, you should. I was like, man, please. You gotta have fat cat money to get into the office, and I'm not interested in getting that game. Not that I would ever really even think about it, but, but re the reality is, is that people need to stop thinking about politics and thinking about religion. Because guess what? You know what's gonna really happen at the end is that we're gonna have a one world government, and the same Republicans and the people who call themselves Christians are gonna be the same ones that are a part of that one world system, and you're gonna have to accept the mark of the beast or be killed. And you're going to be either Christian or government, one or the other. At that point, you're going to have to make a choice. Because that's where we're headed. The government is going to be a one world government. And the Antichrist is going to be head of that government. So understanding this stuff a little bit helps us get a little better understanding of where we're at today and where we're going. Let's keep going. I'm almost done. So it appears in the scripture that the red horse could be a spirit of communism. Because remember, it's describing these horses as being spirits. Next. The white horse. Now I know a lot of people want to say white horses, uh, either the devil or Satan or Jesus. To me it doesn't sound, Jesus doesn't come... To conquer, in my opinion. That, that word conquer makes me feel uneasy when mentioning Jesus. Jesus doesn't have to conquer. Jesus has already conquered. He is the conqueror. He's all, he is the victor. I mean, he doesn't have to go conquer. He, he doesn't make me join him. You either join him or you don't because he's already conquered. He's already the boss. He's already on top. He doesn't have to make you do nothing. You do it or not because he's already the king. He's already the king. So when it comes to having to conquer, to go out and conquer, that just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, it says, and I saw and behold a white horse, and he had, set on, had a bow and a crown, and was given to him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. See, Jesus absorbs. He goes into an area, like for example, this church came here, and we're going to go out and evangelize. We're going to reach people. I don't conquer anybody. I even tried it that way. I know the Word of God, and I know it more than you, and I'm going to go up and I'm going to slam you with the Bible, and you're going to walk away because you can't take that. And I didn't conquer anything. I tried to conquer, but that doesn't work. But then I go to somebody and say, man, I love you. Let me just tell you what Jesus did for me. And, and you begin to see a light in me. You see something in me that, and you see some hope because of what I've told you. And then you begin to be drawn in. That's not conquering. So to me, it doesn't, it could be the Antichrist. It doesn't sound like Jesus to me, but let me tell you this. This is the part that's interesting. The white horse, when it comes to, remember there's going to be an antichrist, and there's going to be a spiritual leader that's going to be called the false prophet. And the false prophet is going to be along with the antichrist going into the lake of fire. Now, today's society, you ever heard of Chrislam? The two leading growing religions, or the two largest religions right now, are Catholicism and Islam. And I have, I'm speaking out of ignorance now, I really haven't studied this myself, but I need to. The idea of, and this is what I've heard, and I need to study it myself. I'd like to make that difference, but I, I will study it, but I, I wouldn't doubt it. From what I understand, the Catholic Church is accepting Muslims as legitimate because they believe in Abraham.
And they do. Muslims believe in Abraham. So there's always, always this mending and blending that's taking place. The, the large, and we're going to talk more about the, the Roman Empire and how that got involved with uh, where its, its realm is in this one world government, one world religion. But if there's going to be a one world religion, there's going to have to be a very high power involved in politics. Do you know that the Pope is the only one that's involved in the, uh, uh, the United Nations? The only religious representation in the United Nations is Catholicism. So now we have this, this thing we should be paying attention to. Because the two biggest are Catholicism and, and Muslims. And there's already a hint of them mending and blending. Right there, you could have a one world religion right there. Right there, just from those joining. And if an Antichrist wants to try to do that, that's something that could happen. Now remember, this is speculation. But let's look at this. When it talks about a white horse, what color car does the Pope have? Did you know that the, 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 the Pope has a white helicopter? You know he has a white plane? What, if he was to ride on a horse, what color horse do you think he'd be riding? He has a crown with all kinds of pagan symbols on it. So already this is giving us some understanding of where Catholicism is heading, okay? Okay, we've got, we've got the false prophet that in my studies, and if you've got a problem with this, please come see me. I'll be happy to show you this stuff. But it looks very closely like the false prophet will be the Pope at the time when the Antichrist comes into office. And all those Catholics out there, if you're going crazy, get mad at me, I'm sorry, C call me and I'll be happy to show you this stuff. And if you don't want to hear it, I love you anyway. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just here to preach. <laughs> I'm just here to give you the truth. Uh, the, I know all about the Catholic Church and, and, and I don't dislike Catholics, but I, can, I can't confirm something that's not correct. The Catholic Church has got so many teachings that they've left for tradition. I've actually got the study Bible for c converting people to Catholicism. I know exactly what they teach and they've gotten so traditional they've left the teachings of the, of the Apostolic Church or the uh, First Church. Now that's not just for Catholics though because Baptists and all the other churches have done that too. Accept the Lord, you're saved. Nothing else you got to do. Just accept Christ. The Bible says you got to repent which is turn from sin. Says so you got to be baptized. You got to get the Holy Ghost. Those are the, the, the foundations of your relationship with God. But we've left that and said, oh, that doesn't matter. No, just accept Him. And that way I can determine when I'm saved instead of God. How does that work? Understand, uh, the Pope always dresses in white. His traditions uh, for centuries have always been about white and, and things. He's got a crown. Now it says he has a bow, but it doesn't say anything about any arrows or any weapons. But see, the Pope or the Catholic Church has power. They have their own government in the, in the Vatican, for goodness sake. Even uh, the United States or federal, nobody have their own police. They've got their own, uh, what is it called, Vatican City? You can't even mess with those people. bro. They've got, they've got their own secret police. They've got power. Doesn't mean that, you know, because I believe that uh, what Baxter said, and I think it makes sense, is they have, he has a bow but no arrows. Well, the a Catholic Church has a different kind of weapon. They have power. They have power. And then it talks about a crown. Now, see, people automatically want to assume a crown is Jesus, but so the Pope wears a crown too. So the white horse could very well be Catholicism. Uh, I believe Catholicism is going to be involved in the one world religion. It's the largest religion right now on the planet. And it's not consistent with the word of God. So it would be very easy for the Antichrist to connect to it. Because it's all about traditions now. It's not about uh, what the scripture says. But it's about what Vatican City says. They have become their own entity separate from God but including God. But they really make themselves above God. Uh, those are some pretty bold statements, but I can qualify them later. Now, let's go on to the pale horse. And we're done. I'm sorry I had to go on a little bit about that, that politics thing, but uh, that's, that's, I, I want the truth. Does anybody want the truth? I want to know the truth. I don't want to play games. I don't want to be spoon-fed and, and stroked. I want to know what's really going on. <clears throat> Okay, where am I? The pale horse. It says, I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Now, we're dealing with... Uh, 
the first four seals. And when it comes to this one, uh, people are, are, are not real fussy about this one. Most everybody agrees on this one. It, it says what it is. It is death. That's what we're dealing with now. And in today's society, we have more death in the last, what, in the last 20th century? I'm missing a slide. Here it is. The pair horse, international spirit of death. Do we got death right now in this society? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Death dominates the world. We have death left and right. People dropping like flies in, 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 in individual sense and in group sense. Uh, with earthquakes, famines, floods, all kinds of, uh, who was it? There's, they just saw in the news. I mean, every day you look at the news, someone's dying. It's amazing we still have 7 billion people. We lose people like crazy. We still, we just multiply like rabbits, I guess. We have famines and diseases all over the place. Famines. Consistently famines. Earthquakes. The tsunami. How many people were killed in the tsunami? I mean, hundreds of, death is everywhere. In Africa right now, remember we talked about the pale horse being, uh, dealing with the southern areas, because the first scripture, and, and the last scripture, I think it was five in uh, Zechariah 1, talked about the pale horse went to the southern part, and the white horse and the black horse, which is capitalism, uh, is in the northern area. And of course, the northern area is 80% capitalistic, and we've got the white horse being Catholicism, uh, which is more prevalent in those areas than in the southern areas of the population or of the world. But let's look at the southern area. In Africa, the life expectancy for a man is 40 years old. 40 years old. Half of the population of Africa have AIDS. You have whole villages that have no adults. You've got kids that are being raised by people who are just villagers. I mean, you've got so much destruction and, and, and death and loss. It's just unbelievable. And you know, and we worry because, you know, we didn't get a chance to have a, a fish sandwich for breakfast or lunch or whatever. We, we fuss because, you know, we got a speeding ticket or, or we fuss because we didn't get what we wanted from our spouse or from our kids. and. We didn't get the raise we wanted. And there's people who don't have mommy and daddies anymore because of losing the AIDS and could very well get it themselves and have a life expectancy of, of very short. That's the kind of thing uh, that's going on in the southern areas. Let's look at this century and I'm almost done. Look at the, let's look at this century. This must be one of the bloodiest centuries ever. World War I, 8 million killed. World War II, 52 million people killed. Doesn't even include all the minor wars, the Iraq war, the uh, Desert Storm, and uh, the Afghanistan war, and all these wars that are going on in this century. 200 million people to war this century. And this is what was even more shocking to me. One billion babies aborted this century. One billion. Now if God really is against abortion, which I think he is, can you imagine the grief that that would bring the Lord? Because a hundred years, that could be five, ten minutes. To him. He, he could look at and see that all as one picture. Bam! A billion babies dead. Time is different for him. But understand, this has been a bloody, bloody century. Is death something that's going on right now? So what we're looking at is the idea is, is what, where, where are we in the, in the spectrum of these, of these horses? Have these horses been released? Are they now, are those seals been opened according to the testaments or to the, to the revelations? The first four seals may have already been opened and may have been opened for some time. See, we, we, uh, I'm very linear. I, I see things as, you know, okay, he sits down and, and cracks seals in a row. That's just how I think of it when I read it. But that's not necessarily how, it, if these things are correct, Catholicism has been around since 300 AD. <laughs> 300 AD over what? 1700 years? Communism has been around since the 1800s. Two centuries. 
Capitalism in the 20th century has been the dominant force in this last century. So if these are things that could be, and I'm saying they could, I'm not telling you I know, I'm just telling you it sounds, uh, it sounds close, just like the eagle and the lion. I like things because you have two different places talking about the same horses. And these horses have been given the description of spirits. And if it's a spirit of communism, a spirit of capitalism, and a spirit of death, these things are very real today. Catholicism is around, it's very strong. Communism has taken its hold all over the place. Now the question is, what about the fifth seal? That would be my next question. If we think that the first four seals have been open for some time, we're waiting for the next seal. The fifth seal is, talks about when the uh, souls under the altar, there's an altar in heaven, and there's souls under the altar, and they say, when will, be we, when will we be avenged for the blood that's been shed? When will we be avenged? These are martyrs with those that died for Christ. And who knows how many there are. I mean, think about it. Between the time of uh, persecutions of Christians up until this time, it could be millions. I mean, it says there's these great multitudes in heaven when they're talking about this. But when is the next seal? It could very well be when the great tribulation starts. Because I think it's right around the corner. Because the next thing that's going to happen, in my opinion, I think, Bas I think Baxter's incorrect about World War III happening later on. I think that could be something that happens now. I th he, he thinks that World War III is going to be the catalyst to say, we can have no more war. So we have to get ourselves locked into a one world government, one world religion, and a one world currency. Because those are the three things people fight about. That's what causes war. I believe he's right about that. I'm just not sure if that happens later. I think that it happens earlier. I think that that may be the cause for us to enter into the one world religion and then go into the great tribulation. But we'll look at more of that later. What we're learning here right now this should give us a better picture of what God's plan is and what we should be doing about it. The fifth seal, I believe, is going to be around the time of the tribulation. And then when you go on to the further seals, we'll study more of those later. I can't go into those now because you got the seventh seal, in my opinion, is when we're in heaven. And then you start the seven trumpets, which I think brings us into the, into the tribulation, or into the, it, it starts the wrath, it prepares us for the wrath, and I think the seven vials is the wrath of God, which I don't think we're going to go through. Now, I'll go into more details about those things. I want you to stand right now, and I want us to, to start to begin to ask ourselves. This was a lot of teaching, there wasn't much preaching going on, I want you to stand, I want you to stand. Today was more teaching, it wasn't much preaching, but it should get you thinking. It should be.